Claus Gustafsson. Uh, can you summarize this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry? Uh, it's a prize for the development of, of a new method for genome editing. Uh, so basically, it's, scientists have figured out a way in which they can specifically cleave any sequence in the genome. So you know, our genomes, they are vast, they are enormous. Uh, and if we want to make changes to them, which could be for maybe investigating the function of a gene or correcting an error or making a change so that we get the crop with a different sort of type of property, then we need to cleave at one very specific site in order to make that change. And what the scientists that we award uh, today, uh, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dauna, what they have done is that they have developed a, a, a scissor or scissors that can be used to specifically cleave at one precise site. So it's, it's a programmable scissor, so you can program it to recognize a certain sequence. Uh, and once DNA is cleaved at this sequence, then you can use all sorts of different tools to repair it and make the change that you would like to have there. So the thing that they have done is that they found this pair of scissors in, uh, in, in very fundamental studies that they, they did, and they immediately understood that it had this wide set of applications. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's what they have done. It's a, it's a basic science prize, but with great, great sort of uh, implications. So do you have an example of where these scissors have been used? So, uh, I mean, if you, so it's eight years ago, so they, they were sort of uh, first introduced. Uh, and what we have seen during those eight years is that they have been used uh, uh, in basic science a lot. So there have been sort of this development of new var variants of them, and they are used as a standard tool now all over sort of science. Uh, what we are seeing uh, recently is more and more practical applications. So, uh, and of course it always takes some time because you need to sort of uh, refine the technologies and you need to sort of solve practical problems and so on. But now, for example, uh, there are clinical trials where they try to correct genetic uh, disorders. Uh, and one example is uh, experiments that are doing with uh, sickle cell anemia. Uh, it's a blood disorder that sort of affects millions and millions of people worldwide. And where they can take out sort of the stem, the hematopoietic stem cells, the stem cells that create new blood from the bone marrow of a patient. They can use CRISPR-Cas9 to correct for the mutation and then put back the, the, the cells and, and get positive results. It's still early days, but I mean, this is a technology with, with, with sort of uh, uh, great um, promise, so yeah. To rewrite the code of life, yes, you mentioned. Yes, yes. Mm. Which is, of course, I mean, when you say that, rewrite the code of life, I mean, immediately you start to think about the implications of this. Because, of course, this is an extremely powerful tool that needs to be handled with great care. It needs to be properly regulated. It needs to be used in a responsible manner. And this is something that also our, this year's laureates have been sort of engaged in that. So uh, when they come, I guess they don't come to Sweden because of the COVID, but, but if you get a chance to interview them, you can ask about that because this is something that um, is very important sort of part of this. Now, it's not something that's completely new to science because of course there are other methods. I mean, we have this knockout technology for mice and so on. So I mean. There, and there are other types of gene therapies that are sort of being uh, tried out. So there is this sort of uh, networks of rules and regulations and permissions that you need uh, to have and so on. But, but the, the enormous power of this is of course something that you need to take into um, consideration. Yeah. Why do you have to consider the ethical dimensions? Of because there are some things that are basically not acceptable, not from a scientific point of view or, and not for, from a sort of moral or ethical point of view. Like, uh, like uh, making inher you know, inherited changes for, for example, um, uh, I, I think it would be very difficult. I mean, it, 
this is a part of, of it that I, I don't even want to discuss it because it's sort of it's, it's so negative but I mean you can think about uh, the Second World War, the Third Reich, and sort of how they tried to sort of uh, get a certain type of, of, of people and breed people, you know, with blue eyes. And so, so, so of course, there are these sort of possibilities also, but, but, but or risks, I would say. But, um, you know, with the, with the proper framework and rules and regulations, I, I think that can be handled. And we just have to realize that this is technology that's here to stay and uh, we just need to use it in the correct way. And there are many other things, also in chemistry. You can do all sorts of poisons and stuff with synthesis and so on, and, and that is not, that is not sort of, uh, something that I would recommend. So, yeah. What was the greatest challenge on the path to this discovery? I think, so, so I know that uh, uh, Emmanuel Charpentier says that the chance favors the prepared mind. I mean, and I guess that's Louis Pasteur, or sort of. It. And uh, I think what we have here are two very competent and good scientists. And they investigated something, you know, in a very sort of careful and professional way. And, uh, you know, with very high quality experiments and data and so on. And then they made the discovery. So I mean, and that's often how scientific discoveries are made. I mean, there is a lot of of knowledge, and you have to do what you do in in a sort of in in, in the sort of state of the art way, and you need to be prepared for sort of finding things. And they were all of these things, and then suddenly it was there. So 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 um, I don't know whether there was any particular challenge. I think the challenge is always to do good science, things that people can repeat and sort of, and, 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 and they did that, and they found something amazing. And to note the surprise, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the prize was not unexpected, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. Did they expect the prize this year? Uh, so I haven't talked to Jennifer Dauna because we didn't, we didn't reach her uh, on the phone. Uh, we talked to Emmanuel uh, Charpentier, and I, you know, it's difficult for them not to be in, s in some level. I mean, they, of course, they have gotten every single prize on the face of the earth. So, of course, I mean, it would be strange if they don't think that maybe. But, but, but I, I was actually moved to see how happy she was about this, and I think that uh, there is something special with the Nobel Prize, something that we should be very sort of, uh, that we are very proud and happy about. It, it, it's a prize that's been around for a long time, and, and that, that uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think it meant a lot to them, and, and I don't think that anyone thinks that they will get it, and it's something that's obvious. But, uh, so they were very happy, and, and that's, um, yeah. And finally, can you tell us shortly, what makes you most excited about this year's prize? So, I think it's all these genetic disorders that we can start to think about and, and that we can sort of uh, treat eventually. I, I, I think it will take a long time before we can start to go into, you know, larger organs like sort of correcting changes in the liver or heart or whatever but this would just being able to take out these hemat hematopoietic stem cells and so sort of correct and help people and these are these are serious disorders i mean and and, and lifelong suffering so i i think that that's something that i'm really looking forward to uh, when we start to see results of there but i would also say that this has in many ways revolutionized the, the, the molecular life sciences. I mean, if you look at sort of crop science, for example, and so on, I mean, this is used all over the place. And, and uh, so uh, it's difficult to point to just one single thing. And it's, it's also that the implications in the beginning was, of course, cutting and making this change. But now this is, this is used as a toolbox almost. You can do all sorts of other things that you couldn't even sort of dream of before. So it's the sort of wide array of applications that are sort of affecting all of us. I, I, think, that that's, um, I think that's what's exciting about it. It opens a new 
new, a new window, a new possibilities that, that we didn't have before. And, and, and that's exciting. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Klaus Gustafsson. Yep. Thank you.